Hey everyone, welcome back to On Purpose, the number one health podcast in the world. Thanks to each and every one of you that come back every single week to listen, learn, and grow. Thank you so much for giving me time out of your day, trusting me, trusting us and our incredible community here to help you in your search for greatness, for growth, for purpose, for passion, whatever it is that you're seeking. And today's guest is Gabby Bernstein. Now, Gabby has actually was one of the first people that I ever interviewed when I was at the Huffington Post. And if you go back and watch those interviews, they're still on YouTube, you'll notice that we hit it off like this. We connected immediately. We then ended up doing like two, three interviews straight away where we're having these amazing conversations. And we found so many different ways to collaborate over the last few years, but I am so excited for this particular interview because I know this is a subject that's really on your mind. It's something that you've really been thinking about. So today, Gabby's with us to talk to us about her new book, Super Attractor. Uh, There it is, Methods for Manifesting a Life Beyond Your Wildest Dreams. We are going to put the link into the comment section as well, so you can go and purchase the book if you enjoyed this conversation, which I know you will. Uh, moving over to the audio interview uh, introduction. So Gabby is a New York Times bestselling author of The Universe Has Your Back and has written five additional bestsellers. She was featured on Oprah's Super Soul Sunday as a next generation thought leader and the New York Times named her a new role model. She appears regularly as an expert on the Dr. Oz show and co-hosted the Guinness World Record largest guided meditation with Deepak Chopra. In her new book, Super Attractor, Gabby reveals how to manifest the life you desire. Gabby, thank you for being here. You nailed it when you said that we were magic when we first met. It was like, I remember walking out of that interview and saying to my publicist, he's a superstar. I love him. I want to be his friend was the first thing I said. And then I said, I want to do more with him. It's just the beginning. And I remember a few months after that, I called you up and I was just like, Gabby, can you be my mentor? Because well, you were my mentor. No, 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 no. And, and I meant that. And it was just like, it was so real because I was just like, I'd, I just started interviewing at that time. Mm. And when you're interviewing a lot and you don't, you're still, I was so new when I first met you in, mm. in this, at least in this off, online external world. And I, it was a very good time for me to really observe who deeply connected Mm. and you deeply connected Deepak deeply connected like there's certain people from that time so I look back and I look at you here today and I was just Mm. like you're my friend Mm. Uh, I really appreciate you I've learned so much from you you've always been just a call away and I'm so excited for people to learn from you again uh, with another amazing book so in this book you talk about something that I think what I was just sharing with you earlier I think this is a subject that so many people are speaking about very superficially. It's very sub-level. I read a lot of articles on manifesting. I don't read many deep books on manifesting. And I hear a lot of the same stuff everywhere. So when I looked at this, I was like, oh, here we go. Like now we're going to get really deep. So tell me, let's, let's start right off the bat. Tell me where are we going wrong with manifesting? Like what are the biggest mistakes, the myths, the things that are not Beautiful. really the right places Good question. Well, first of all, I think that the reason that you're feeling that way about this book is because it's actually not a book about manifesting. It's a book about feeling good. Mm. And the key to manifesting and the key to being a super attractor is to be aligned with feeling good. And that doesn't mean that we feel good all the time, but our our deepest desire isn't to get that thing to feel good enough and feel good. It's to feel good so that we can allow whatever we need and whatever is of the highest good to come into our life. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think some of the wobbliness maybe shows up when it comes to manifesting is this idea that I can think it and it will be. And that's true. You know, you can, you can think and think and think to the point of belief and then that can actually come into form. But more importantly, we need to really make it our commitment and our devotion to feel good. And that may mean looking at some of our shadows. That may mean having the willingness to change our mind all throughout the day. And that may mean being more committed to our well-being and our personal growth than we ever had before. But in the pursuit of feeling good, having a good life, and being a super attractor. Yeah, amazing. So it actually starts with us. And what I'm hearing you say is just that we know that it's not about getting that thing. Yeah. But the challenge is that somehow in that pursuit, it always becomes about that. Even if that thing is something elusive, like a title or a status or, you know, being on a list or whatever it may be, like it ends up being that way. How did you, you said something really interesting to me when you walked in, you were, and I was gl- congratulating you because the book's already a New York Times 
uh, bestseller, right? The book's been number one on the list, which is unbelievable. Oh, uh, it's been like three, three five, okay. and six, three weeks in a row. Okay. Yeah. Which oh, is, number one on Amazon. Yeah, number one on Amazon. Right, right, right. So it's been, so it's got all that. But, and I said that to you and I congratulated you and I showed you a picture that you posted. I was like, this is amazing. And you said something really interesting to me. Yeah. Say, say what you said. To I me. pretty much said that the reason that it's number it's it's on these lists is because I don't give a shit. Like I I stopped caring. All I cared about with this book, this is my seventh book, and all I cared about with this book, because in many of my other books I really cared about lists and things like that. But with this book, and that didn't mean that there wasn't major service behind them and the primary intention being to serve, because if that wasn't the case, they wouldn't have had success. Mm -hmm. But my agenda was different at times, and you know, it's more in the, the the marketing of it. And this time around, I was like. I'm going to show up and do my part, but I'm just going to have fun. I'm going to feel good. I'm going to relax and I'm not going to think about it. You know, the day that my publishers called me and said the book is on the list, I didn't even realize it was Wednesday, which is the day I could have cared less. I wasn't thinking about it at all. I didn't even recognize the day it was. And that's been happening every week. Every Wednesday, I keep getting these text messages. Oh, it's number five. It's number six. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's Wednesday. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. You know, and I'm celebrating it, but I'm celebrating it mainly from the perspective, like, like today, these, these, you know, this acknowledgement of the, these lists and things really just represent that it's helping people. Yes, exactly. Right side up. Which I think is, which I think is such an important thing to celebrate. That's right. Because we're celebrating the fact that a book about being a super attractor is growing as opposed to a book about something negative or something toxic. There is that, yeah. definitely. And yeah. I also am seeing, like, I wrote this book because I wanted to feel good. Mm. And so I'm seeing that I knew that if it made me feel good, which it did, in multiple cases were even returned to it mm. on my own to read it. Mm. I knew that if it was making me feel good, that it was definitely going to make the reader feel good. And that's, that's today I was at lunch and a woman, you know, grabbed me and was like, look, I just have the audio book right now and I'm listening to you right now. And I was like, awesome. And she said, it's making me feel so good. I said, well, then I've done my job. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, you've, you've talked a lot about how, you know, we're living at a time when there's a lot of competition, there's a lot of uh, comparing, there's a lot of, you know, me versus this or competitors and peers and all that kind of stuff. And, but in this book, you know, and a lot of that makes us feel like what I'm hearing you say, you're like, oh, I'm having fun. Like I'm enjoying it. Mm -hmm. But a lot of us turn to being strict with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Whereas you take an approach of saying, let's be compassionate with us. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that almost paradox. Cause we almost feel like, okay, well, if I'm competing, I need to get more organized mm -hmm. and more strict mm -hmm. and more, whereas you're actually saying, no, be more compassionate. Yeah. One Share of the that. biggest blocks to being a super attractor is the comparison and the belief that there's not enough to go around. And I actually wrote a whole chapter in the book called There's More Than Enough to Go Around. Love that, yeah. And it's for that person that's like the pusher that I identified in the book, the person that's like, if I don't do it, it won't happen. And everybody around me is better than me or I'm not, or I'm better than everybody else. And that separation and that judgment and that self-attack and all the ways that we feel unworthy. And so when we start to identify the ways that we're pushing and controlling, we can begin to unpack that. And I guide the reader in the book to unpack that behavior and to recognize how much it's blocking someone from, from allowing and letting what they desire to come into their life. Because the real secret is to feel good. The secret is to love where you are in the moment and not compare yourself to where you think you should be. Because once you start just being psyched about what is, more of what you desire comes to you. And I, I can stand behind that wholeheartedly, mm. wholeheartedly. Tell me about one event in your life where you feel you've really felt, and I know there's probably loads, but there's I just- There's loads. Yeah. Um, you know, just even in the book, I write a lot about a lot, but like, you know, big things that have occurred in my life, uh, you know, being called by the producers of Oprah and saying, you know, we want her to be on the show. That that happened. And I, when I called, I said, oh, I've been waiting for this call for 10 years. Thank you. I didn't say, oh my God, it finally happened. You know what I mean? It was like, I just was in a sense of knowing. And even when, when I got to the place where I started to apply these principles, I tried to conceive for three years. And you know, I've talked very openly about that. By the time I really did the work on that struggle and that push and that control, I was at such ease and had faith that I knew my baby was on the way. And I started to receive a lot of signs, a lot of synchronicity. There's a story in the book I could share with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah okay. please. Yeah, yeah. So this is just an example of what it starts to feel like when you're in your super attractor energy and you're in a place of allowing and synchronicity and guidance and allowing whatever your higher power means to you, whatever, whether it's God or spirit or inspiration or higher self, I don't care what you call it, but tuning in, tapping in. If someone's like, I don't believe in any spiritual stuff, just, you know, they probably do because they're watching you. But if they don't, they could, you know, go to the place of saying my voice of inspiration, mm -hmm. intuition. 
Caseta by Lutron offers smart lighting control brought to you by pioneers in smart home technology. Caseta's smart dimmers and switches replace the switch in your wall, making all of the lights that switch controls act smart. There's literally so many places in your home where a switch controls more than one bulb. It could be your ceiling lights, your chandeliers, and so many more. You can save money right now by replacing the switches instead of replacing all those bulbs. Smart bulbs give you the ability to control your lights with an app or voice assistant. Caseta gives you the best of both worlds, smart lighting control from an app or your voice, and control at the switch that anyone can use. One of my favorite features is the Smart Away feature, which randomly turns lights on and off during the evening to look like you're at home even when you're not. It's super great for privacy. So get smart lighting the smart way with Caseta by Lutron Smart Switches. Learn more about Caseta at lutron.com forward slash purpose. Again, that's lutron.com forward slash purpose. Go be smart. So I'm in this three-year journey of trying to conceive and really for a year and a half, almost two years, I was like in the low of it, really feeling like, okay, I'm not good enough. My body isn't working. How can I make this happen? How can I make this happen? Right. And really pushing and controlling and trying to eat things and track my ovulation and all that crap. And then about the fall of 2017, I started to get into more of a surrendered state. And I started practicing the methods that I teach in the book of just really trusting that there was a higher guidance that I'd believed in for my whole life and relying on that. And that's when things started to get really wild and synchronistic. And so around the fall of 2017, I was driving in the countryside where I live most of the time. And this is where I do the majority of my manifesting is just driving in the car, looking at the foliage, listening to my mantra music. And I feel so awesome when I'm in that position and I'm just so grateful in the moment and I'm driving and I'm driving and I'm like, I feel so awesome and so grateful that I live in this country town and I have all these friends and I don't have any cell service right now. And I'm so psyched about that and no one's bothering me and I feel good. And then all of a sudden I felt the presence of a baby in the backseat and I was like, wow, like deeply moved. Tears started to roll down my face. I felt so moved. And at that point I heard my intuition say to me, the baby's coming in March. And I was like, and it was so loud. Like, you know, when you hear the voice of your inspiration, you're like, that's it. Okay. I believe. And so I started saying to myself over and over, like, oh my God, March, you know, I have to conceive at this time for the baby to come in March. I saw myself getting a little into it, like too into it and hooked into it. So I said, okay, listen, you know what universe, I'm going to give this over. And if my baby is indeed coming in March, show me a sign, show me lilies to let me know that the baby's coming in March. And a week later, I got an, a letter in the mail from a reader and it had this angel card in it. And on the back of it was this picture of Archangel Gabriel. And Archangel Gabriel is typically depicted holding lilies. So I was like, yo, this is dope. <laughs> and on the back he wrote, I thought that you needed this. And I was like, thank you. Good. So here I am. March. March is coming. March is happening. And early March rolled around and I wasn't pregnant. So I was like, what the hell? And not only was I devastated once again, another month has gone by, I'm not pregnant. But this time I was like, I thought the universe had my back. Like I was mm. getting signs. Like what, what's the up? What's up? Mm. So I walked into my husband's office and I was just hysterically crying, so upset, so defeated. And at some, my phone was like on the desk, like right here. And all of a sudden my phone started playing a song. And the song was just repeating, repeating. And so I go like, you know, when your phone malfunctions, you're like, I'm just going to turn that off. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'm just going to turn that off. And then I look at the phone and I start listening to the lyrics. And the lyrics are, way go Lily, way go Lily. And the guy keeps repeating, way go Lily. And then I look even further and I look at the name of the song is way go Lily. And he just keeps repeating Lily. And I look even further and the album title is I See the Sign. <laughs> And where was this playing? Where, what area of your phone? This was just... My phone just turned on. Oh, wow. Uh, no, that's, it's, it's, you know, it's spirit working mm -hmm. through the technology. And so my phone just turned on. It was an album that I'd never heard. I'd never heard the song before. It wasn't in my Spotify and it just began playing. Now get this. So I get, I, I, April rolls around and I'm pregnant. But then I did the math and I was like, when did I conceive? I conceived the last day of March. Mm. So that synchronicity. You know, you hear March, you find your signs, you feel super guided. 
that synchronicity is available to all of us, but it's what it had. We have to get out of that pusher mentality and out of that controlling behavior to allow the presence of spirit to work through us and guide us, mm -hmm. and or the universe or whatever you whatever you call it to be the presence of 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 direction, inspiration, to be that guide. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And what the, what fascinates me about stories like that is that I can, you know, hearing you tell it. And you're looking at the signs and you're also at times, like I love the honesty and the the openness of like, you're like, actually, there were, you know, I walked into my husband's office defeated. Yeah. Like, there was a day when yeah. it didn't feel like it was going yeah. right. And then I doubted it. And so I love hearing that because I think that just shows that we're all human and we have those moments. But what I'm intrigued by is when someone doesn't feel that that voice is loud for them yeah. of intuition, of inspiration, yeah. of God, of the universe. Yeah. And I know you've can, talked about this in other books, but I feel like so many people listening right now, they're like, yeah, Gabby, you can hear that, but I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, what does that person do? What do they need to do to hear better? I don't want to sound better? cliche, but read the book. I mean, yeah. the book, I mean, that's not my answer. I'm going to give you a better answer than that. But this book is about, is for that person that's saying, I, I'm blocking my inspiration. Mm -hmm. You know, I went on my Instagram and I was like, how many of you, I did a, to a, a poll and I said, how many of you are blocking your manifesting? And 96% said yes. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. And and there's and I and I call it out. I call it the ways that we block. And I and this whole book is methods for unblocking. Mm -hmm. And and the, the thing is, is that you know the thing that's most important is if, to trust that if you're watching this right now, that you are in, in fact being guided. So even if you don't feel that guidance, you can't hear that inspiration. There's no way that you would have listened to this specific podcast in this specific moment if you were not indeed being guided. Mm. Okay. So just take that in fully and completely. And then your next step is to recognize the guidance and then follow the guidance you receive, whether it's read this book or not this book, maybe another book, maybe after this podcast, you're led to another author on your podcast. And then that's the book that you need, or that's the, the, the therapist that you need to find. It doesn't have to be me, but, but, but stay open. And when, when you have an intuition to listen to a podcast or it's when you're feeling free and you make a decision to do something, it's when you're in a place of, 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 you know, no agenda, just a place of joy, inspiration relaxation and you start to listen to something or your guide just that's that's when you're really listening mm. that's when you're really receiving guidance so i think anyone that's listening to you is listening but they just may not realize it right yeah and i think i think the biggest challenge when i'm hearing what you're saying the biggest challenge people have is we think of like what you're saying it's like we always look at things as black and white yeah it's like you either hustle or actually, I'm just going to sit here and wait for it to happen. Right. And you're not really talking about sitting here waiting Either for of them. that. Yeah. In this book, there's a chapter called Spiritually Aligned Action. Mm -hmm. And this is a method that I've been practicing throughout my entire career. And it's been the key to my successes and my happiness and my joy and everything. And then the times when I haven't been applying it, you know, things didn't work out. Yeah. So it's spiritually aligned action. And the first step is to recognize what is my desire and how is it backed with joy, love, and service? Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the reason we're sitting here right now is because everything you've been doing for a very short period of time has been backed with love and service and joy. And it's taken off because you're into it. You're having fun, right? You're having fun. Joy is the catalyst. Mm -hmm. The second step, now somebody might be thinking, okay, I want to lose weight. How is that backed with service? I don't mm -hmm. get that. And I would say to that person, well, when you lose that weight, you feel better. You have more energy to give to your children. You are clearer. You no longer have brain fog. Your gut feels better. You can, you know, bring more energy to your life, to your work. That's service to the Absolutely, world. Absolutely. Big 100%, time. Yeah. So there's no, but it's, it's checking your desires and making sure it's, I don't want that so that I can feel happy. I want that so I can bring more light to the world. Yes. Okay. That's the step. And the second step of the spiritually aligned action method is to believe, all right? So to believe that you're worthy of it, to believe that the universe is guiding you, to have some kind of faith that, that you can let go and allow, okay? That faith has to be backing this. And then the third step is to take action from that place, take a spiritually aligned action from the place of love, service, and faith. That's where you take action. Mm. So if you're going to pick up the phone and make a cold call about a new job, don't do it from your place of like panicked fear and anxiety. Do the work to get into a place of recognizing the service behind it and really feeling into the faith that that that, that good things can come to you. Yeah. And then the final step is to be patient. Mm. Not people don't like that step. <laughs> but patience comes when you strengthen your faith. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So the point is, is that this isn't a method on um, this isn't a book on just sitting on your ass and meditating and thinking things are going to come yeah. to you. This is a book on getting aligned. And then taking action from that place of alignment. And so I mean, you might you might agree with me on this. Like I can, 
in one hour, I can do more than the average person can do in a day mm -hmm. or two days. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's because I do things from inspiration. Mm -hmm. And so when you're inspired, you're in spirit and you are expanding time, you're given more energy and you just can get, you know, every, things download fast. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. No, you I know what I'm agree. Yeah. No, no. I, I hundred percent. I definitely think that we can stretch time. Yeah. Definitely can stretch time. And, and I, and I love that description. That step, that method's great, by the way. Yeah. That's, as in it's spot it's on. Like, it's like, you know, people that are watching you, they they want to take action. They want to feel proactive mm -hmm. in their life. But I think most people are taking action from a place of stress, fear, uncertainty, pushing, controlling. Mm -hmm. And if I don't make it happen, it's not going to happen. That belief mm -hmm. system is blocking your super attractor power. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I actually experienced that last year. I was sharing and making a lot of videos and I started committing more to creating more amazing content that I loved and enjoyed. And we made some amazing videos last year. And the number one thing I used to hear from everyone else, and this wasn't the voice in my head, this was the voice of the noise of outside, was, Jay, when are you gonna get like media? Like when, when is like someone, you know, when is media gonna take notice of you? Like when is this gonna be? And it was so interesting because that last point you made of it was patience yeah. that had to be practiced. Yeah. And for me, it was not like, oh my God, that's gonna, and I was like, that's interesting because people are saying that that's when they'll accept that this is successful. Right, And I had to make a choice yeah. whether I was gonna let that definition define that I yeah. felt successful now, or do yeah. I feel successful now because I'm doing what I love every day and I yeah. really enjoy it and yeah. it's helping people. Beautiful. Yeah. And, and I think that that was such a distinct thing for me because and then when I let go of that and had that patience, then this year, a lot of that came. Then you're on Ellen, you know? <laughs> Correct. And all of that came totally organically. Mm -hmm. None of it was maneuvered. Because you didn't or... care. You weren't trying. You were having fun. Exactly. And you are a prime example of what it means to be a super attractor. You're in joy. You're having fun. You're not attached to the outcome. That's how your entire career began. I'm mm -hmm. not attached to the outcome. And I'm just going to do something in, the, in, in service and in love and inspiration. And it's going to become this thing. Mm -hmm. And that's how I've built my career too. Yeah. And what about when, so I love what you, you gave a great example there of how people are scared to, you know, like you don't want people to pick up the phone call in that fear. You want them to do mm, that joy and service. Mm. How do people make that switch from fear to joy and service? If someone's honest with themselves and they say, Gabby, right now, I'm just scared. Like sometimes I'm just living in that. I would tell someone, like sometimes you just have to pick up the phone and ask for the job because it's, this is the window you have. Sure. So I would, you know, say meditate before and say prayers before and turn it over and prepare prepare energetically to the best of your ability. And then also think about, this is a big one, like think about how that desire is backed with service and love because as soon as you get into that energy, you feel good. And it's no longer about what you think you need. It's about bringing something greater to the world. And so when I would want something big in my life, whether it was a media placement or a baby or anything, I was always, if I felt like I was strangling the desire, I would always return to why this was going to bring light to the world. Mm. And that, I mean, that's where, and that's where the moment you, you go there, you feel better. Yeah. And that's the action that you want to take place from that place of action. hundred percent. I am. I'm so happy that you're saying this right now because yeah. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. That's the only thing that keeps me going. Yeah. Makes you wake up in the morning. Yeah. I say to people all the time, like, I believe there are, there are service driven creators, entrepreneurs, business people, whatever the list goes on. And then there are lifestyle business people, entrepreneurs, et cetera. Lifestyle mm. people are the ones mm. that do it because they want to mm. live on a beach and have a comfy life. And then the service ones are the ones who are just going to keep doing it. I mean, you're on your seventh book right now. I'll be writing books the rest of my life. Yeah, exactly. And if that isn't service- And I'm writing a new one right now. No, don't, I mean- <laughs> let's 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 focus on this one. That's it. We got to focus on this one. But yeah. I do have a contract. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, but I didn't realize you were okay. Fine. I'm working on I'm working on an Audible original. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's called a fiction or nonfiction. Um, of course, it's nonfiction. Okay. okay. I'm just checking. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it's yeah. A, yeah, it's sort of an audio experience. Sure. But it is nonfiction, self help. Right. Yeah. Oh, cool. Code. I'm excited for that. Yeah. So it's totally. It's only Audible. Starting off was only Audible, and then I can in a year from then turn it into a book if I want to. But that sounds fun. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, tell me about, you've said that you're no longer in that hustle mode, but you have been before. Oh yeah, I so, was. So yeah, so I'm interesting. I'm newly not there. Right. Yeah. So was that, were you still being a super attractor then? Yes Or was and that no. blocking your- Yes and no. Like it was murky, right? right? Because I was attracting a lot, but I was probably really limiting my capacity. And so it's like, you know, um, 
we, we often, you know, don't realize that like we are, we are functioning at a fraction of what we're capable of. Mm. And so I definitely was like, even though I was hustling and I was having fun and I was in service and I was in joy, things were happening, you know, books were coming out. They were, they were, you know, helping people saving lives. Right. Mm -hmm. But I, but I was definitely blocking the full capacity of what I could be creating and giving because I was, I was hustling. I was a work addict, you know, for many big reasons, right. You know, I've talked very publicly about, you know, didn't realize that I had had trauma until I remembered it in 2016. And it was when I remembered my trauma that I started to truly heal my addictive patterns. Mm. You know, it was like, I got sober 14 years ago. And then- uh, That's amazing, by the way. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, sure. And then I, you know, and then I, and then I became a work addict and, and I always thought like, oh, my work is in the pursuit of something so magical and so great and such great service that it's okay to be a work addict. Hell no. Mm. Hell no. It took me down. But then I remembered my trauma and then in the recovery from re really healing my trauma past and really working really through it and becoming more and more free and more free today than I've ever been. In that journey, I, I started to see that, that, the, that the pushing and the controlling was the, the, and the opposite of who I believed I wanted to be. Mm. And so at that point, I, I really just started to accept that I, didn't I could have a no stress policy and that I could do less and attract more could begin to rely on other people. And because look, you know, I could have been in the same position, right? Having a team, having publishers that were supporting me, all that, and still not letting go. Mm -hmm. I could have still been fully in control, trying to hold everything, even with those resources. So it doesn't matter like what you have, it's about your mental choice. Mm -hmm. And so in that choice, I said, you know, I'm going to focus on my art. I'm going to focus on my gift and I'm going to allow the universe to support me mm -hmm. and work through people. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it over. Yeah. So I'm relaxed. <laughs> I love that. Would, would you say in that, that early phase, the hustle was critical? And would you say for others that it is as well? I wouldn't change it. Right. Yeah. But had I been aware of my trauma, you know, yeah. or had I not had trauma behind it, I could have had the hustle without so much pain. Mm. There was a lot of pain and suffering in that hustle. Right. that I wasn't able to recognize at the time because I felt so proud and so excited about what I was doing. I wasn't able to recognize that I was in a tremendous amount of pain. Mm. So, yeah. So, so if someone's listening and they're thinking, well, Gabby, I'm really working hard right now. Mm -hmm. You'd say, as long as you're dealing with that trauma that's there or you're reflecting on well, where it's coming from. If you're working from, really hard and it's because you're trying to prove yourself because you have a wound that you haven't healed, then go, go heal the wound Got it. because everything will follow. Mm -hmm. If you're working really hard because you think you need to get ahead or whatever, there's probably a wound there, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and a belief system that like, if I'm not pushing and controlling, it's not going to happen. And so, you know, I think that the thing I would tell my younger self is that, uh, you know, trust more and no, I actually don't think I would tell my younger self anything because I think everything worked out exactly as it was meant to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I read somewhere recently that a lot of successful people in general, whether spiritual or not, have to have the belief that everything happened at the right time or everything happens for a reason. And when I read that, I thought, interesting, because so many people see that as a cliche, so mm -hmm, many people see it mm -hmm, as a throwaway. Mm -hmm. But when I read that actually both spiritual and non-spiritual mm -hmm. successful people would mm -hmm. say that that's how they see things because you're now looking at life as life is taking care of me. Totally. You're now looking at life is teaching me when I need to. Life is keeping me where I am, where I need to be. Seeing the difficult moments as opportunities that are revealing to you what you still need to heal. Mm. And so when you, when you flip your perspective of the difficult times and choose to see those difficult times as, as spiritual assignments, to, to grow, to be, to be closer to your source, to inspiration, love, joy, then it, it turns, it turns into a miracle. You know, I just, um, I'm five months into recovery from postpartum depression and anxiety yeah. and insomnia, which was Jay, the most, the, the, I'm going to say the F word, but the most fucked up experience of my life. Wow. And, uh, right now I'm really feeling great and I'm feeling really proud and really grateful that that happened because I can help save women's lives as a result of being able to talk about it with authenticity. Mm -hmm. I can help be a better voice for mental illness because I've experienced it. I can be a guide for people who need medical support when they really need it. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't change a thing. Absolutely. And thank you for sharing that again and, mm -hmm. and talking so openly about it. I, mm -hmm. I think that's ultimately like the 
underline to any major, because we're talking about Viktor Frankl, obviously, in Man's Search for Meaning, talks about it so beautifully of just like how he couldn't make that situation good. Yeah. But he knew that if he dealt with it in the right way, yeah. that that would then teach people in the future. That's right. And, and I think that that's such a great, it's always the underline to any pain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you're right that in that moment, you couldn't be just happy in it in all no, of a sudden. No. I right? just burst out into like mm -hmm. laughter. But you know that that experience has now given you a whole new group of people to serve and share and totally. support with. Totally. And I think all of us who, anyone who's listening right now or watching right now and going through any sort of pain, I genuinely think that's the underlying point. If you can't find any other answer, mm. that probably is it. Yeah. That you're you're being sent a particular gift yeah. that you will then be able to open yeah. for other people. Yeah, I really hope that the, the people can take that in. And, you know, I write in the book that the the key to feeling good is to decide to stop feeling bad. Mm. And that could be really offensive to certain people out there that are depressed or broke or, you know, ill or, you know, whatever it may be. But I, I tell the story of my postpartum as a true, honest, authentic example of how when I was in the most, the darkest moment of my life, suicidal, suicidal, mm. that I could still decide to feel good in the most subtle ways. So like, Allowing myself to accept support was a way of allowing myself to feel good, right? Mm -hmm. Or deciding to feel good. Uh, being open to a medical path that I never would have contemplated being on was a decision to feel good, right? So it's um, there was a lot of that decision that that decision making in that dark low moment. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is in a critical moment right now, listening to this. The fact that they're listening was a decision to feel good. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. hundred percent. How do you, how do you take that almost like the crazy high and low of like, you know, you, you've waited, you've thought about it, you super attracted a beautiful baby and then you go through depression afterwards. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how do you go through that in your mind from the point of view of like the, the extreme high of waiting for this, being mm -hmm. patient for it. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And then the next thing, you know, Mm. You're at one of the lowest points. Like how, how do you mentally even just rally around that? I think that my faith is what got me through because I knew I was being guided even if I felt at the darkest time. Mm. I knew that I was being guided. And when I started to really surrender was when the guidance could really come through. And now in recovery, I am actually quite grateful for it because I have like an even greater appreciation for my son than I probably would have had I not been through it mm. because every moment that I have with him, I'm just like relishing in it because, because when I wasn't in that space and I couldn't recognize him and I was scared of him, I, I now know that the, I, I can celebrate the great joy of not being there. Mm. Yeah. It's just, it, it fascinates me because Whenever I'm listening to you, and even in the book, it's like faith comes out so strongly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that's ultimately where so many people feel so challenged by it because they're like, what do I have faith in? Right. Well, that's, and, what, and that's, that's what all my books yeah, are about. I know, I know, like, yeah. My, all my books are really about helping people decide what they have faith in. Correct. And giving them an opportunity to crack open to a higher power mm -hmm. of their own understanding, as they say in the 12 steps, a higher power of your own understanding. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that language is is very free. That's, Correct. There's a lot of freedom in that language. Because anyone that's listening, I don't, I don't care if they call it God. I don't care if they call it universe. I don't even care if they just call it inspiration. Mm. You know, inspiration, someone may be like, I don't think there's something outside of me, but I know that I can receive inspiration. Mm. And when I follow these steps, I'll feel that inspiration and mm. that intuition, that's perfect. Yeah. So your approach is very And so when you start free. to have faith in that inspiration, mm -hmm. then life gets easier. Yeah. And I think that's what it is. And I love that you've just said that, that that's what your books are about. I think ultimately life is a path of us figuring out what we have faith in, because you're going to have to have faith, mm. right? Whether it's- Well, I think a lot of people walk around, sorry to interrupt you, but they walk around yeah, no, thinking that, they, that their, their faith relies in their own will. Mm. And that's where they get into a lot of trouble, mm. right? Uh, really, really be learning to live in a way where we are no longer, it's not my way or the highway. And we are starting to have this trust that we can turn things over and we can lean into a better feeling and then be guided. Yeah. Then, then life gets really groovy. I mean, just over the last few days, it's like at one point I was just feeling like a little beat up because I've been like running and moving and I'm here traveling with my family and mm. I was just feeling it. 
And then I just said to my, I just said, I, I prayed and I said, thank you, spirit, and, you know, energy of the highest good for, for, for giving me strength and giving me energy to get through all these beautiful opportunities and to show up for them with joy and, mm. and, and service and, and not, you know, not being overtired and beaten down. Yeah. And as soon as I said that prayer, I, I mean, energy just started to move through me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And even though I'm tired, I'm super pumped to be here and I'm super pumped to go to the next thing. And, you know, yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's easy to say when you're doing awesome things like this, but, no, I, but it, I needed that strength. Yeah. And so I think that once we start to have that relationship with our higher power, we can stop trying to control things and we can give them away. Yeah. And, and I think, I mean, when, when you were saying that it's unfortunate that I'm only thinking of a fiction movie, but I think it's an important reference. I, have you seen Doctor Strange? No. Okay. So Doctor Strange is awesome. You would love it. Okay. And, and the great, th- I'm going to give away the whole movie now. So maybe you should, okay. Spoilers. I have to, okay. I have okay. to, go, I have go, to. Go. The, the amazing thing about the movie is it's based on a doctor who's highly reputed, who really understands his craft and his faith is in his hands yeah. and his ability yeah. to heal people yeah. as a surgically heal people, not, not spiritually heal people. And what ends up happening is he has an accident which takes away his physical ability to have the stability in his hands to perform any surgical yep. procedure yep. that he then turns to alternative parts. Yeah. Now it's a fiction story, but I'm, and I would love to hear if you know anyone who's had a similar story. We hear about so many stories like that, or meet, I meet so many people like that who were billionaires initially and valued everything they had in their money. And then they lost that money and then that changed them. Mm -hmm. Or someone who had a value in one of their physical attributes, whether it was their beauty or their strength. And then that was taken away from them, but then they found it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I find so incredibly telling of what you're saying right now is the best example of it is that you find that, that when your faith is simply in your physical self, it's just consistently broken. It's called right? body identification. Yes. And when you're stuck in that body identification, you've disconnected from your spirit self, mm-hmm. the spirit identification. I have a whole chapter in the book called Lift the Veil. Mm-hmm. It's my favorite chapter in the book. Mm-hmm. And I really push the metaphysical envelope there. And and it's and it's really, really talking about how we we, when we're in that body identification, you know, my, I am, you know, this person and I am this author, or I am this, do- this business owner or doctor or whatever, we're actually blocking our greatest source of power. Mm-hmm. And so when we start to, you know, use our bodies as a vessel through which we let spirit work through us, that might sound really heady for people, but I can, I can unpack it. Yeah, do it. Unpack it. Yeah. I think that when we start to recognize that it's, it's, how can I make this not too heady? Mm-hmm. <laughs> when we start to recognize that when we are attuned with the feeling of inspiration, I keep coming back to inspiration to use as the demystifying sure. word because I would I would call it spirit, but mm-hmm. inspiration is the same thing. Mm-hmm. When we allow ourselves to be really in, attuned with this inspiration, we actually, as we said before, can expand time. The, 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 the beautiful message that you give to your child comes through you when you stop thinking about what you're supposed to be saying and you allow what needs to come through. And so we're no longer in the body and the pretense of what we think we should be doing. And we're actually in our spirit self using the body as a vehicle through which we express truth. Mm-hmm. And so uh, when we can make that adjustment, you know, you're unstoppable. Yeah. And that requires a set of daily practices Mm -hmm. and like Mm -hmm. commitments, because I feel like getting to that point of even being able to let something work through you takes time, right? Like it takes Mm -hmm. your, it's Mm -hmm. not something that happens. It's not something you can turn on and turn off instantly. You're possible. It's possible for someone to turn it on and and, and have that quantum shift. But, but most people, Mm. I think they have to, we've spent, they spent 30, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 years, even 10 years, uh, detouring into fear, as A Course in Miracles would say. Yeah. The Course calls it the descent from magnitude into littleness, right? Mm-hmm. So going down that fear-based path, repurposing it, replaying it, recycling it, making, you know, creating more and more of it and really believing in it, mm-hmm. that, you know, the years that you spend in that that detour into fear, it's going to take a little while to unpack that and undo that. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean, need to take as much time as it took to get there, right? Right, 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 right. Uh, So that's where a spiritual path comes in. That's where even a personal growth path you know, just listening to you and just following this podcast is a part of the process of unpacking and undoing the ego. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't have to be a painful journey. That's the other thing is people don't, you know, people think, oh, it's, you know, spirituality is such a, so much work. Well, 
you know, have fun along the way. Mm. Enjoy it. Even if you're having tough experiences, celebrate the miracle moments. Yeah. I always find that it's, it's in hindsight, it's always the process that you fall in love with. Like, it's almost like, and, and it is in hindsight, but you have to start using that hindsight to do it in mm-hmm. foresight. It's almost mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. before I used to look back at things that I solved and I was like, oh, I was so fun trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm like, okay, let me just have fun figuring it out. That's right. Right. Does that That's make right. sense? Yeah. Yeah. And I can look back, you know, I said like all these years I'd been suffering, but yeah. I can look back and be like, I had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. You know, I was suffering. I was going through stuff. I wasn't aware of what I was needing to heal. I was trying to heal. I was, you know, having anxiety, whatever it was, but I was in the pursuit of feeling good. Mm -hmm. And so that commitment continued to guide me to feeling more and more health and well-being. Mm -hmm. Well, if everyone's listening right now and they're like, Gabby, I'm ready. I'm going to try, I'm going to get this book. Because I think I, I need to, I, because what I think you're doing, and I, and I love that you do this, and I said this to my team before you came, it's like, I really think you're spiritually challenging people today. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's a good thing. I think we need that. Yeah. Because it's easy to sit on the side of just, you know, just the, the visible. Mm-hmm. And you're really pushing people into the invisible. And every time I speak to you or I read your work or I think about what you do for the world, I really think that's what you do. Mm. I think that's your superpower. I think you're you're really good at challenging and pushing mm. enough to provoke people, but not enough, not mm. too much where people are like, oh my God, that's just, I don't even know what she's To wake about. them up, yeah. Wa- yeah, which we've talked about before, like to, to awaken people. If someone's like, uh, Gabby, I'm going to buy the book today. I'm going to read the book. I'm going to start making a commitment. How can they get the most out of this book? How should they read it? How should they approach it? How should mm. What should they be thinking of? Hmm, good question. Mm. Um, I would say just be open and willing to see things differently mm-hmm. and take what works and resonates and don't don't take what doesn't. Okay. Because if it doesn't resonate, then you're going to you have another should. You know, I should be thinking like that. And the other thing that also happens with books for me often is something will resonate the first read and then three years later I'll read it and it's like a whole new book, yes, you know? Yes, yes. So yes. trust that. Just let yeah. yourself be cool with that. Yeah. And don't, don't judge your process. And I always say to people, like, if you take one lesson from this book, your life will change. Mm. If you apply Just one. Yeah. Even one. Yeah. Even one. Mm. And in terms of guides in, in your life, when you were writing this book, mm. where were you finding those moments of inspiration coming to you? Mm. Like what, how was that happening? What does that feel mm. like? Mm. One of my mentors is, doc- is, I'm not saying it was, yeah. yes. even though he's not in the physical form anymore, is Dr. Wayne Dyer. Mm-hmm. And so he's actually been able to mentor me even more in the spiritual realm. And I write about him a lot in the book. Uh, and so I, I've, I've experienced Wayne write through me and speak through me. And anyone has the capacity to connect to spirit. I mean, there's a whole book he talks about this, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, Wayne is my mentor and uh, I can... I can feel his presence as I write and as I speak. And he, you know, I think that he in many ways wants to use those of us who are willing to speak on behalf of love. And if we're willing to let him, he'll be there. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's amazing. It's crazy to even think that, but I've said to people so many times that you can be mentored by people you didn't even meet. Oh yeah. And, And, you know, I had a relationship in the human form, but I actually said to him, but even if I hadn't, it wouldn't matter. He could still be there. And I said to his assistant, he had one assistant his entire career. And I saw her at an event last week. And I said, Maya, um, you know, Wayne had a big impact on me when he was alive, but he's having a much bigger impact on me now. And does she feel the same way? She's like, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Gabby, I love this. We end every interview because I know you've got a million things that you need to uh, go through as well. We end every interview with a final five, which mm. is our final fast five, which means uh, you have to answer in either one word or one sentence. Okay. Now I always break the rules with this and I ask everyone to talk more longer than five, but here we go. So your first question that I really, really want to ask you is what have you recently started doing in your life that has brought you the most peace? Oh, so many things. Yeah. Um, being fully present with my son. Okay. Like putting the phone away. And I mean, there's no greater way to practice presence than be with a young person. That's beautiful. I love mm-hmm. that. I can't wait to meet him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, he's, he's so, when you meet my child, <laughs> you're going to be like, what? You know, he's so lit up. He's a really amazing person. I love it. Sorry, I'm sure everyone says that about their own no, children. But it's great. It's he's, great. He's so fabulous. He's so fabulous. You can say as much nice things as you want. He's amazing. Uh, question number two. 
Where do you think you're still holding yourself back on this journey to be a super attractive? What else? So there's I've got some there. trauma work I'm still working on, okay. but now I am at a place where I feel safe enough to go to those darker places. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing really heavy lifting. I'm doing a lot of EMDR therapy. This is not one sentence. That's but fine. But we're going very there. useful. Yeah. yeah. And uh, tell us a bit about that. Um, EMDR therapy is eye movement desensitization and process reprocessing. And it's uh, bilateral brain functioning. So you have a buzzer in either hand or in either ear, or you're moving your eyes back and forth. And it, it's it's uh, activating both sides of the brain while you're talking about a trauma or a disturbance. And so much like emotional freedom technique, it unlocks that that energetic disturbance. Wow. And so you can have like, you know, full, full trauma leave your body and you could walk out of one EMDR session feeling pretty new. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I yeah, I recommend it to everybody. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Where are you doing that? In New York? I have an uh, EMDR therapist up in the country where I live. And then I also have a therapist in the city that does it with me. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, great. Question number three. What's the last kind thing you did for a stranger or someone you didn't know? A lot of things. <laughs> I've been really... So I think becoming a mom, I've become even more compassionate then all of these are being answered in multiple sentences, but I don't- That's fine. That's they're okay. all long, they're all deep questions. I've, I've become much more compassionate. So I don't know, I can't, I can't stop on the street and see a homeless person without giving them a 20. Like I can't, like I, I, I like, or more, mm -hmm. like I just can't, unless I think that there's drugs involved and I just don't want to, you know, feed the habit. Um, I, I, uh, on my sober anniversary, my 14 years of sobriety, I went on my Instagram, like, no plan. Like hadn't told my team this, like went rogue in the morning, woke up, went on my Instagram and just started writing. And I was like, I'm so, I'm sober 14 years. I and that, yeah. I want anyone that is needing to get clean or needing support in your recovery to, ha to have a copy of my book, Spirit Junkie. And I will send you a copy. And my team was like, what the fuck did you <laughs> no, do? we're going to figure out how to send but it. But then they wrote back to me and they had just been responding to all these people. And they were like, this is, we're saving lives. Thank you. I feel so, my, my, my head of customer care was like, I've never felt better than today. Wow. Just feeling that love of being able to send thousands of books to people. And um, yeah, the books are out. I love it. Question that felt number, good. Question number four, uh, what book has moved you recently? Mm, I'm studying uh, the work of Dr. Sarno. And uh, yeah, he, he wrote How to Heal Back Pain and The Mind-Body Prescription and oh. The Divided Mind. And uh, I'm, I'm going to go deep into the, to educating myself on how to teach that work. Nice. But the concept being that our physical pain and, 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 and physical illness is based on a root cause condition that we, you know, uh, impermissible rage and impermissible trauma and things that we are unwilling to feel. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. And that's the hardest part. Actually, yeah. When you're feeling it physically. Yeah. You're trying all the physical ailments. It's really hip because what he suggests is that when you phys when you feel it physically, it's actually your, so your unconscious brain has this trauma or this rage and your conscious brain is like, nope, we're not going to feel that. So I'm going to put it on your back. Mm. And, it, and, and, then, and then physically what's happening is you're sending that attention to the back. And so there's no oxygen going to the back. Yeah. And so there's pain and inflammation. And uh, it's a really incredible book. That's crazy. Well, all of the, all yeah. of his books. Okay. Dr. Sarno. Great recommendation. Thank you. And the fifth and final question is, what's something you were certain about that recently you changed your mind on? Something that you were like so clear about and you're like, okay, actually I'm, I've evolved that thought. Mm -hmm. and take, 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 take a turn. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you thinking. Mm, certain and then I changed my mind. Or something that was pretty set and then you reflected on it, it's evolved or it's revealed something new. Yeah, I think in my marriage, I think mm. that I've had a lot of beliefs of like, you know, you know, you think you're right and the other one thinks they're right. And I've, I've in the past year really accepted that, that the only right answer is to honor each other's feelings, mm. not to fight for what you think is right. Mm. I love that. That's beautiful. I think that's great. And when you say honor, you mean just unpack honor for me just to... Say, I hear you. Okay. I honor you. Yeah. Even if you think they're being bullshit, right. you know, honor that they have an experience and a feeling mm. and an emotion. Rather don't than defend trying to yourself. interpret it or manipulate it. Don't defend it. Yeah. yourself. Don't, don't manipulate it. Don't, mm. you know, if you're in a healthy relationship, that's, you know, not an abusive relationship, but yeah. to be able to look at somebody and say, mm, okay, I don't see it that way. Maybe and think that yourself. I don't see it that way, but I see your suffering and I see that you're feeling something and I honor your feelings. And the thing that I've also learned from that is the greatest gift you can give a child is to honor their feelings. Mm. That's beautiful. And that's my, that's my commitment to Oliver. I love that. 
That's great. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for doing this. Thank, Thank you for being you, here. Thank you for friend. writing this book. Everyone who's been listening and watching, make sure you go grab Super Attractor. Uh, we'll put the link in the comments, as I said. If you've enjoyed this conversation, the book dives so much more deeply into each and every one of these aspects. And as you can hear from the way Gabby speaks, it's very methodical. It's very logical. She really unpacks and breaks things down. So there's step-by-step -step processes here. It's not just thought and reflection. It's really packaged in a way that will help you live it. So go and grab the book. Uh, thank you again, Gabby, for thank being you. here. So grateful I for love you to you. be here. The so feeling is be very mutual, mutual. And I can't wait to hang out more. Yeah, we will. Yeah, we need to figure that out. But yeah, thank you.